In World of Warcraft, there are a lot of characters that we never really had the chance of seeing in game, but they've played pretty notable roles in the novels themselves. And this kind of bothers me because, you know, these guys, they deserve a spotlight too. And so you know what, in today's video, they'll get one. In today's video, we will be looking at 5 awesome characters never shown in World of Warcraft. Number 5, Lucan Foxblood. Lucan Foxblood is a character that played a critical role in the war against the Emerald Nightmare that took place before the Cataclysm. During this war, the Emerald Nightmare was literally on the verge of consuming the entire world due to Xavius tricking Fandral Staghelm into placing a branch from Xavius' tree form into a world tree, which drastically strengthened the power of the Emerald Nightmare. During this war, Lucan Foxblood was able to save the lives of many, many characters, including Brol Bearmantle, Thora, the niece to Broxagar, and even Tyrande herself. Although he himself wasn't a skilled fighter, he saved them by teleporting them to and from the Emerald Nightmare Plane whenever they needed to escape or whenever they were about to be overwhelmed by Xavius' nightmare manifestations. He has this ability because it is revealed that he was actually born in the Emerald Dream, so he therefore had a connection to both the Dreaming Plane and the physical one as well. When Bro Bearmantle and Toronto Whisperwind met up at Aberdyne to investigate why the town was so strangely quiet, they were suddenly ambushed by all of the sleeping residents of the town that had fallen victim to the Emerald Nightmare. In addition to this, the power of the Nightmare itself threatened to overwhelm both of the Nightmare Idols, nearly forcing them to be consumed by fear. Tarada even felt the urge to actually drop her weapon and just cuddle on the ground due to the amount of fear forcing itself upon her. Before either of them were killed or fell victim to the nightmare though, Luke and Foxblood found them and managed to teleport them away from the town, ultimately saving their lives. Number 4. Pained Pained is a night elf bodyguard who is extremely loyal to Lady Jaina Proudmoore. However, this puzzled Jaina since even she stated that when she would dismiss Pain to allow her to venture back to Darnassus and to, you know, go back amongst her own people, she would actually deny the offer, stating that she was more comfortable hanging out in Theramore and around Jaina. Because of this, the two became close friends. When Garrosh and the Horde attacked Theramore, she was one of the commanders tasked with leading the defense of the Isle. She orchestrated an ambush which caught Malkarok and a sizable amount amount of Garrosh's horde troops in surprise, killing scores of them, while also only losing a handful of Alliance troops. She was also a highly skilled warrior, nearly killing Malkarok in a 1v1 battle, and even standing her ground against Bane Bloodhoof. When the bomb fell on Theramore, Pain was inside of the city, instantly killed by the arcane explosion. However, when Jaina found her corpse, her face was lit with defiance, even in the face of inevitable death. Number 3. Eadric Edric was one of the most loyal soldiers at Gen Greymane's side. However, when Gen and the Worgen were called to Darnassus at the request of Malfurion and Tyrande, Edric saw that something was not right. The Highborn were being mysteriously slaughtered by an unknown person or persons, and despite Greymane ordering Edric to abandon the investigation, he decided to find out the truth anyway. Along his investigation, he was followed by Jared Shadowsong who pursued him. However, as he chased Edric, Jared stumbled into a trap which caused him such pain that it was literally unlike anything he had ever experienced before. However, before he was killed, a worgen whispered, I am sorry. I did not realize that was there. And he was cut down from the trap. Later on, it is revealed that Edric was the one responsible for cutting him down from the trap, but he was not the one who placed it there. It was Maiev's shadow song. At this point in time, Maiev was so consumed by hatred for the Highborn that it drove her nearly to madness, causing her to turn on her own people, which almost resulted in her killing both Jared and Malfurion. Edric tells Jared that the trap he fell into was one that was supposed to catch the Highborn and make death as excruciatingly painful, yet slow as possible. And should that torture mechanism fail to deliver the killing blow, the second part of the trap would trigger, instantly causing the victim's heart to explode from within. This is why Edric refused to let Jared remain in the trap. Later on, while the two were pursuing Maiev's watchers, they were separated, but even then, Edric managed to kill many of the assassins. Jared, on the other hand, was ambushed by a watcher by the name of Neva, and as her dagger was about to cut into Jared's throat, Edric re-entered the battle, startling her, but she still managed to plunge her dagger into Edric's stomach when she turned around. However, this left her open to an attack, and Jared used her glaive to cut into the backside of her neck. Neva stumbled and nearly fell off of the cliff they were on, but before she did, she held on to Jared, hoping to kill him with her in the fall. Before this could happen though, Edric sacrificed himself by tackling Neva, severing her hold on Jared. Both the Watcher and the Worgen fell. With his last act, Edric had saved Jared's life. 
Number 2, Stormsong, otherwise known as Javon Grim Totem. As can be seen in his last name, Stormsong is a part of the Grim Totem tribe. However, when Magatha had poisoned Garrosh's blade in an attempt to kill Cairn, which proved successful, Stormsong was outraged. To commit such a vile act meant that his mistress had betrayed what it meant to be a shaman, and although he too did not agree with Cairn's policies when he was alive, he however had highly admired how honorable Cairn was. Magatha, however, was not honorable. During the night of the Makara, the Grim Totem led attacks to slaughter the Tauren that resided within Thunderbluff while they were sleeping. Stormsong was tasked with the most important mission, however, lead a group of warriors to assassinate Bane Bloodhoof, ultimately ending the Bloodhoof bloodline and allowing Magatha to secure her position as chieftain of the Tauren while remaining in that position without being challenged. However, when they neared Bane's encampment, Stormsong told the rest of his group to wait while he would scout out ahead and return. However, Stormsong had actually gone to Bane to warn him and to notify him that his father was dead, and to also announce to him that his life was in danger. Reluctant to believe Stormsong at first, Bane hesitated, but then he decided to trust the shaman as he felt that it was the right decision, even when one of the Warbraves brought up the possibility that Stormsong could be walking them into an ambush. However, this would be the right choice as Stormsong saved not only Bane's life that day, but Thunderbluff and the entirety of the Torrens as well by ensuring the safety of the Son of Cairn. Later on when Bane retakes Thunderbluff, Stormsong once again stands tall and proud beside Bane, assisting in the battle by conjuring massive storms that shielded zeppelins from being detected as they allowed Bane's forces to drop down on the capital from the zeppelin. For his actions, Stormsong becomes part of Bane's most trusted inner circle and becomes the leader of the Grim Totems who chose to sever their ties with Magatha and instead pledge their loyalty to Bane. Number 1. Vandal Vandal was one of the most powerful demon hunters trained under Illidan's guidance. When Illidan began training a batch of new recruits, Vandal was the first one to volunteer for the ritual of becoming a demon hunter without actually knowing what he was getting himself into, whereas all of the other recruits could watch Vandal and then be prepared for themselves to know what they would be in for. Vandal, however, would have absolutely no expectations as to what would be tested of him. After the initiation process and Vandal becomes an actual demon hunter, he accompanies Illidan during the invasion of the Nathrazim homeworld which also led to the sundering of the planet. Vando was also the one who spotted High Lord Cruel and a group of demons on their way to flanking both the Horde and the Alliance when we first step into Outland itself. After seeing this, he convinced Illidan to intervene, and as Illidan was conjuring a spell powerful enough to slay the High Lord, Vanto and a group of hunters were forced to confront the Doom Lord in order to buy Illidan some time. Despite Cruel being an exceptionally skilled and mighty foe, however, Vanto managed to buy Illidan enough time to eventually slay the High Lord. Without the intervention of Illidan and Vanto, we would have never made it past the Dark Portal. Vanto was also exceptionally strong-willed. When one became a demon hunter, they become one with the demon that they merge with during the initiation, which makes some hunters go insane since the demon is constantly whispering in their head. This causes some people to go on a bloodlust killing spree, murdering everything that they see in sight, friend or foe. Despite this, however, when Vandal was viewing the Horde and the Alliance fight back the Legion at the Dark Portal, he refused to fight either the Horde or the Alliance, and he also refused to kill them, despite the demon inside him craving chaos. When the Black Temple was raided by the Horde and the Alliance, Vandal was summoned telepathically by Illidan. Those who were summoned were those in the Demon Hunter starting area that were tasked with the mission of acquiring the Sargerite Keystone on Mardoom. However, Vandal was not able to answer the call. This was because Maiev's Shadow Song had intercepted him as Vandal was making his way across the Black Temple courtyard. Immediately without thinking, she attacks him, and for a good amount of the fight, Vandal doesn't fight back. He dodges and evades her strikes, trying to convince her that he is not her enemy. But Maiev, being Maiev, refused to believe it and ruthlessly kept up her assault. This forces Vandal to fight back against Maiev in order to make it in time to answer Illidan's summoning. During the fight, Vandal stands his ground and even at the time manages to overpower power Maiev's Shadow Song, which is highly impressive considering Maiev is one of the best melee fighters in Warcraft history. However, near the end of the fight, Maiev teleports behind Vandal and uses her glaive to strike directly at Vandal's head. Believing him dead, 
Maiev left him and made her way to Illidan. After Illidan fell by her hands, Vandal wakes up in the middle of a group of Horde and Alliance soldiers who are celebrating the fall of the Betrayer. Immediately, he rolls into the shadows to conceal himself and plans to literally kill as many of them as he could before he too would fall by their hands. Seeing as to how there's no point in carrying on since Illidan is dead and literally there's no one else to oppose the Legion. However, as he was about to leap on the closest soldier, the voice of Illidan called to him. You must be prepared. And as Vandal heard the voice of his master, he lowered his weapon and vanished into the night, remembering that the true enemy was not the Horde or the Alliance, but the Legion itself.